our next presenter is here. Um, she is our last uh, presenter of the day, but I think the things that she brings together really ties us all in so succinctly. Uh, I would like to introduce to some um, and uh, reintroduce to others, um, Dr. Melissa um, Burt, she, her, hers pronouns. She is an atmospheric scientist and the assistant dean for diversity and inclusion in the Walter Scott Jr. College of Engineering. Dr. Burt leads the strategic planning and implementation efforts for diversity, inclusion, and equity goals across the college. She has also taken an active role in university-wide diversity and inclusion initiatives. Dr. Burt is passionate about building positive science cultures and helping young people, especially young women of color, view themselves as the scientists to which they are. Without further ado, and crossing our fingers without any other technical difficulty, I present to you, Dr. Melissa Burt. Thank you so much for that introduction, Patrice. All right. And we can move to the next slide if you, okay, great. So my research has focused on understanding Arctic climate change and the impacts on the rest of the earth. And oftentimes as scientists, we tend to focus on the complex problem without taking into account the people. So my work has really evolved to center on climate justice, the intersection of climate and where issues of social equity meet. And throughout my journey, I found that my voice as a black woman scientist and the diverse voices of others are not heard, not valued, and oftentimes were unseen. So I first would like to start today with my why. And my why is because of my daughter, Mia. When I became a mom, um, everything changed for me in life because I wanted to keep the world, this world safe, healthy and vibrant for her, for her now and for her future. And so as a scientist, it's a mindset, right? It's how we ask our questions, how we remain curious and open to learning and how we distill that information. And so this is me at seven years old. And like a lot of kids, I asked a lot of questions about the world. I was curious as to why clouds didn't fall out of the sky. I was excited by thunderstorms and terrified by tornadoes, but that curiosity sparked something in me and a little bit of that fear too that I wanted to start this journey to continue asking these questions and hopefully one day become an atmospheric scientist. And so my journey, my journey wasn't easy. I remember telling folks that I wanted to study the weather and they would like laugh and smirk and say, that is not what we do. And oftentimes I really internalized those sentiments because I never saw a scientist who looked like me. I never even had one teacher of color so my ability to see role models or a future as a scientist wasn't that clear or apparent to me. But I continued down this path because I knew deep down with determination and with passion and with excitement that I could overcome the challenges that were in front of me. And so as a kid, you know, my parents really instilled in me the importance of seeking out opportunities. They tried their hardest to give me and my brother access to opportunities, a better life than they had had, because they wanted to ensure that we could be those cha change agents, right? To make our dreams a reality. And I took risks and sometimes really scary risks to seek out different opportunities. Um, and when you think about those opportunities, we think about these beautiful pictures like what you see here on this slide, but to be a change agent isn't easy. And we're oftentimes fe felt, felt by roadblocks, right? Um, and what I found, these challenges were like continuously pulling a boulder up a hill. The weight and the pressure of being one of the only or one of the few was hard. And the desire just to have a sense of belonging oftentimes backfired on me that resulted in angst and anxiety. And I was my own worst critic and didn't understand my own self-worth. Right. And at times I really just wanted to give it all up. Right. This is not for me. But looking back, that boulder that I'm trying to pull up this hill 
and that weight, it made me stronger. It taught me be, to be resilient. It helped me to persevere. And so on this next slide, this was a good day for me. This was an amazing day for me. I got my PhD and I remember standing outside of Moby Arena, uh, feeling all of the feels and thinking back to every single time that I wanted to give up um, or to say that this wasn't for me. But on this day, I became one of 59 black PhDs in atmospheric science. If we just sit with that, one of 59 in 2016. So it takes a lot to get to this point. It takes a lot of perseverance. It takes a lot of um, being able to break down those barriers in a way that you can stand up and to be that model and that role model for others. So oftentimes I find myself, um, and I have to say this over and over again on this next slide, is that this, me, is what a scientist looks like, right? For my daughter, for any other little black girl that wants to do something different, who wants to challenge the expectations that are out there for you. And yes, imposter syndrome definitely seeps in at times. And I have to pull out this mug and remind myself that I am what a scientist looks like, right? And I know by sharing my story and why I'm here, that it helps others see that this is something that they can do. So this journey, um, this journey to becoming a scientist um, was filled with many roadblocks and challenges. And on the next slide here, you'll see um, that I think a lot about becoming and becoming a scientist. And Michelle Obama, I think in this book said it best. She said that she was a person who found herself on an extraordinary journey. And she shared her story so that she could create a space so that others could um, share their stories, hear their voices, and really widen that pathway for who belongs and why. And I thought to myself, like, this is me. Like, this is my why. This is why I keep going. To really think about who can be a scientist, who can ask those questions, and how can I inspire, empower, motivate, and model different roles for future generations of scientists. And so as I continue to center my work on climate justice and focus on the people, the people first, who gets to do that work, focus on the places that we're in, focus on the, the impact that we have on this planet. That's what keeps me going. So I use my voice and I will continue to use my voice in a way to set forth a plan. And on this next slide, you see this, you see me as this voice, right? Talking about things because I understand the science and the urgency of actions on issues like climate change. But through my communications and with others, I'm able to see the importance, uh, the value, the need of connecting on a shared value. And more recently, this shared value has been with other moms and with other parents, in particular in communities of color, who need to know that they should be concerned and worried about their future, about how climate change is impacting their communities for themselves and also for their children's future. And how can I serve as that credible voice, that credible messenger who they can relate to, to help empower, inspire, and elevate their voices in the climate change conversation. So on this next slide, you know, my message to everyone when I think about the science behind climate change is simple. It's easy to understand. And we've known about it since the 1800s, that when we produce and burn fossil fuels from driving cars and making electricity, we are putting gases like carbon dioxide into the air. They're hard, this, this carbon pollution is sticking around in the atmosphere for a long time and creating a very thick blanket that traps heat in our atmosphere. And this blanket is getting thicker and thicker as our planet continues to warm. And it's not just about the heat, it's about all of these extreme events that are happening on more regular occasions from melting of ice sheets and glaciers to increased sea level rise to stronger storms, bigger wildfires to longer wildfire seasons like we see here in Colorado to extreme droughts and food shortages and the loss of thousands of species. The impacts of climate change are far reaching, but it's not a, a far away issue. It's a here and now issue. And climate change is not just an environmental issue. It's a multiplier effect. We're seeing impacts to infrastructures like homes and roads. Uh, we're seeing impacts on people's health, children's health, maternal health, and even our economy. 
It is threatening lives, safety, and the well-beings of individuals. But the good news that I have to share is that we have the skills, the tools, the expertise to solve this problem. We just need to take action now. And oftentimes we think about the people who are standing up for climate and activating on and advocating on this issue, tree huggers, environmentalists, that's okay. But in fact, research shows that communities of color and more vulnerable communities are concerned about the issue, but they don't know what to do about it, right? And so this is where our climate movement has really failed people, right? To engage these communities of color in action. So I wanna be that messenger to provide them with a direction that actually speaks to them, about them and in their community. And we know just from this summer that one in three Americans have experienced a climate related disaster just this summer. So we are all impacted, but in, impacted in many different ways. And what I hear, you know, when I ask these questions, like, do you talk about climate change with your friends? Do you talk about climate change with your family? Do you talk about climate change in your community? The answer is kind of like, no, only 63% of Americans actually talk about the issue, but then they want to know what we can do about it. So what can you do about it? You can understand that issue better, right? Because it impacts us all differently. You can engage with leadership at all levels, at the local, the state, the national levels. And the biggest thing that you can do to tackle this problem, as big as climate change, is to truly talk about it and to talk about it a lot. So it may sound silly to say you need to use your voice, but I want to hear your voice and I want to hear your voice loudly. But I'd like to end with this idea of hope because the climate crisis can be dark and discouraging and depressing at times. But my colleague, Catherine Hayhoe, kind of says it best when we think about hope. Hope is really that faint, small, bright light at the end of a dark tunnel that we head to to find our strength, that we look at when we're discouraged or we're dragged down, we take a breath, we fix our eyes on that hope, and then we pick ourselves up and we keep on going. So our voices are too valuable to be lost, are too critical to be unheard, and are too worthy to be silenced. So I will challenge all of you as we think about the beauty of this earth that we are on, that I will continue to use my voice and I ask that each of you choose to use yours as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Burt, for your bravery, your curiosity, and your willingness to be a visible atmospheric scientist. I need y'all to sit with, I don't, I don't stand with it if you got to, uh, that she is one of 59 Black atmospheric scientists in a field that's over 200 years old. That is visibility. That is support that is love and care for self and so thank you so much um, for believing in yourself and allowing us to believe in ourselves um, you've definitely inspired the next generation and you inspired me to use my voice to speak out on the climate crisis and so thank you so much